Hello friends, my name is Chris and I'm the pastor of Asbury United Methodist Church. I want to welcome you to this Lenten moment. This is our third one of the season and today we are talking about the discipline of prayer. Breathe out my vision, O oh Lord of my heart, do not be all else to me, save that down. So why do we pray? Uh, for me, it's about emulating Jesus. Uh, the Gospels present a very particular pattern of ministry for Jesus, that Jesus would often go off by himself or with a couple disciples, and he would pray, and then he would return from that prayer uh, to the crowds, and he would preach, and he would heal, and he would, he would fulfill his ministry. But prayer was always an important part of that process for Jesus. Uh, we also know that Jesus expected us to pray. Uh, when he uh, preached the Sermon on the Mount, uh, he said, when you pray, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, and he taught us the Lord's Prayer as a pattern for prayer. And so it's apparent that he expected his followers to pray. Uh, he gave instruction, he said, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. It wasn't an if you pray, it was when, there was an expectation there. We see that teaching continue in the letters of Paul in, his letter to the Thessalonians, Paul writes, pray without ceasing. So the expectation is, is put in us uh, from the scripture. Now I'm sitting here uh, today at the altar of our church, and this is a, a sacred place. Many churches have altars, church camps, all kinds of Christian places have altars, places that are symbols of prayer that are set aside for the sacred moments of prayer. When we serve communion, we celebrate the Lord's Supper together, that comes from the altar. When, when people are gonna get married, we say they're going to the altar. The altar is an important place of prayer. In my own life, uh, my call to ministry happened at an altar. Uh, Amy and I prayed together one time at an altar, and it was, it was during that time of prayer that we really decided we wanted to get married. Uh, I've laid my sorrows and my griefs on an altar in prayer. Uh, important, formative times of prayer for me have happened at an altar. And I'm sure many of you have, have had those moments at this altar or a similar place of prayer where you, where you were intentional about praying. You went to the, the space designated for that and you had a, a time of prayer. We need intentional times set aside for prayer, whether that's at an altar or at your home, but we also need those incidental times of prayer where we, we see something happen and we just pray, God, what do you think about this? Or, or something happens to us and we say, Lord, I need some help with this. Those, those quick moments of prayer that are just kind of like text messages throughout our day and throughout our lives. So we, Paul calls us to pray without ceasing, and I think that's what he meant, that we would have a prayerful attitude in everything that we do. And so this Lent, we are uh, taking up the discipline of prayer. I would encourage you uh, to set aside intentional times every day to pray, uh, to, to pray uh, how God leads you. And I would also encourage you to, to figure out some way to remind yourself throughout the day to be praying continually. There's uh, a bunch of apps that you can find for your phone, or you can uh, you can tie a string around your finger if that's what works for you. Set yourself a reminder somehow uh, that just calls you into a time of prayer. It doesn't have to be long or formal, but just just to include God throughout our day. So one thing that keeps us from praying sometimes is that we are. Uh, worried that we don't have the words or we don't know how to pray in an appropriate manner. And if I could do anything in this video, it would be just to take that concern away from you. There's no right words in prayer. There's no formalness needed with God. You can approach God because of Jesus Christ. Uh, you can approach him as a friend and you can pray the prayer that's on your heart. Uh, but sometimes it's helpful to have a model or some way to think about prayer. And so, so what works for me is, is I find the Lord's Prayer to be really compelling. The one we talked about a minute ago, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And it, <clears throat> I like to take the Lord's Prayer and, and kind of say it line by line and then add my own words to it and, and pray into it what I am thinking and what I'm feeling. So here's a couple of examples. Our Father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. That's, that's some King James English there that's just a statement of praise. God, you are in heaven and your name is holy. And so I, I pray that, that statement, and then I follow it up with my own words of praise, words that make sense to me. I've never said anything was hallowed, but I, but I do say to God, you are holy and mighty and great and awesome and amazing and loving and merciful and graceful. And so I praise God's name to start that prayer. Uh, I think about um, when Jesus taught us to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. God, here are my trespasses. Here are the sins that I need to confess. And I'm not uh, confessing those sins out of a need uh, to feel bad or sorry or remorseful. I'm confessing those sins because any relationship in which, which a wrong has been done, the the sin needs to be confessed for the relationship to be right. I, can, I can't be right with God if I'm harboring sin. And then as those who trespass against us reminds me to pray for my enemies or people who seek to harm me and, and to pray for those uh, whom I'm not feeling the love for in the moment. And so I, I go line by line through the, the Lord's Prayer like that. It's been really meaningful for me. I just want to take this opportunity to invite you to come and be a part of the ministry here at Asbury United Methodist Church. We're on North Locust, just inside the loop, and, uh, and we are a people of prayer, or at least we're trying to be. And so come and be a part of this. We worship every Sunday morning at 1030. Uh, you can come in person, or if you're unable to do that, you can join us online via our Facebook page or on YouTube. But, but join with us as we are celebrating this Lenten season. Lent is the 40 days of preparation before Easter, and uh, we are preparing to celebrate the risen Lord Jesus. So receive that invitation, and, and we hope to see you soon. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I hope it's a prayer-filled day for you. Sleeping, thy presence, my light, singing, oh.